how can Boole not have an influence on space exploration? I mean, Boolean algebra is the basis for computer language. Uh, the logic of it, the, the ones and zeros, you know, the uh, and, or, or not, uh, that language equated to how we do computers. And it's computers that allowed us to go to the moon. The key ideas that made uh, Boolean algebra relevant for engineering uh, was Claude Shannon. And actually in 1938, he wrote his master thesis at MIT. And he, uh, in this master thesis, he showed that you could analyze uh, network of switches uh, using Boolean algebra. And, and that was the aha moment for uh, engineers who followed in the sense that um, transistors, when they became uh, viable and uh, they were developed at Bell Labs uh, later on, uh, then could be considered as witches. And so all of a sudden there is this one-to-one -one correspondence between transistors and element of Boolean algebra. And that made computers, the hardware of computers, realizable. To me as a mathematician, it's even more fascinating what Boole did than as a computer scientist or as a communication theorist. I mean, for mathematicians, you're trying to deal with the concept of truth. And truth is a zero or one concept. And Boole was the first person to realize that this whole endeavor that we are uh, going through is itself subject to the rules of mathematics. So Boole was, was really um, the guy who uh, had this fantastic idea that we could study zeros and ones, and that would, and 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 we could get a tremendous amount of mileage out of out of zeros and ones. So he writes this equation: x squared equals x, and he knows that there's only two numbers that satisfy this equation: and they're zero and one. So now comes the punchline. Let us conceive then of an algebra in which the symbols x, y, z, and so on admit indifferently of the values 0 and 1 and of these values alone. There it is. I mean, that's golden. <laughs> it might seem trivial, but uh, I mean, he, he, he mentions you got x, y, and z, etc. And that's what's in the computer. You've got x, y, and z, and etc. You know, a billion of them in there. And he, and he says, how are we going to deal with uh, 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 any number of, of things that are all zeros and ones and how they interact with each other? If you look at the history of automated reasoning, he was on the very early side, but uh, you know many of those who came after him built on his work. Um, and especially, I think, the way he was thinking about things was very ahead of his time. Uh, thinking about, you know, how do we uh, mechanize this process of reasoning, how do we put it on a solid uh, foundation, um, and even how do we do reasoning by manipulating symbols. That was a, a very new idea, um, and of course absolutely fundamental to uh, automated reasoning and, and the success that we're having there today. Well, he did win a gold medal from the Royal Society for his paper on general method analysis. He introduced operator methods into calculus. Uh, he founded new branch of mathematics in variant theory. Um, he did very good work on differential equations. But for all these contributions, you would rate George Boole as a fairly good, not terribly outstanding, but a, a good, solid 19th century mathematician. I think what Boole did, who was also a fellow inhabitant of, of Lincolnshire, as Newton was, uh, is comparable in mathematics to what Newton did in physics. That he saw this phenomenon and that he formulated it in mathematical term. Simplicity is there all the time and that takes great genius. Boole must have been really a phenomenal person. For what he achieved, he didn't have formal education. It, you know, he'd not been subject to the same kind of peer learning that we all are. Um, so he really must have been an individual genius and I think his, his work reflects that. And within a few weeks he had all the ideas for his first book. It was just amazingly quick. Nothing like what anybody else was doing to bring in equations. And then to go as far as he did. I mean he didn't just have the basic ideas. He had a 
plan for what should be done with the subject. What were the goals? He laid them out, and by 1854, he had accomplished them. Amazing. Thank you.